Hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Down to Earth with Harriet Kamek. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Monday, and today is the 9th of September, and I literally have to remind myself that we are in September. I do not know what happened to the time. Can anybody tell me? I mean, just a few days ago, it was August, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I thought so. So I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. I, I, I am doing the right thing. A few days ago, it was August, and we were all trying to figure out what September is going to be like. And of course, we live here in the Midwest where the weather, yeah, the weather is an event here. So it's cool. It's cool. It's cool today, right? It's cool today, but it's going to be hot tomorrow. For the rest of the week, it's going to be 80s. And yesterday, we were all wearing uh, hoodies and jackets and all manner of things. And I'm not happy. You can tell. I'm not happy. No, I'm not happy because I don't like this, okay? I'm not liking it at all. <laughs> I, so, I know I sound like a, you know, I sound like I'm complaining. But seriously, like, I was in the stores yesterday and everywhere there are boots. And I'm like, like, you got to be kidding me. We just stopped wearing boots about three months ago. There's no way I want to go back to wearing boots. But it's inevitable. There it is. Right in front of my eyes, we're about to wear boots. So welcome to the fall season of Down to Earth with Harriet Kimmick. You can listen to us on a variety of platforms. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Periscope. And you can join us later. If you miss any of our broadcasts, you can always join us later on Spotify. You'll be able to hear the shows and things we talk about. And if you want to join into the show, if you feel like there's something that you want to say, if you feel like there's something for you to say, I encourage you to join in by calling into our show. Yes, we have a phone number that you can call in. Because I know many of you have something to say, don't you? <laughs> right? We all have issues. And we all want to say what we want to say, when we want to say. It. And you're like, Harriet, you know I have something to say and I want to say it. So the number to call in if you want to call into our show is 516-387-1463. So if you feel like you want to call in, certainly make sure you go ahead and do that, right? Uh, today I want to talk about uh, when Megan met Harry. And uh, of course, uh, I'm putting this into context that this is love and love is love, right? That's what they say, love is love. And especially this week, because this week is the memorialization and commemoration of 9-11. This is the week when the worst terror attack on American soil took place. And this is the week when a lot of us lost friends and family members in 9-11, someone you know who knows someone kind of thing. And it touched a lot of lives because it happened in New York. And for the folks who live in New York, I imagine that there's still trauma. This morning I was asking my daughter if she remembers 9-11. She says it's not a memory that she's comfortable revisiting. She says for some reason it bothers her. And I said to her, perhaps it was that coming of age moment when, you know, children became aware that the world was real and that there are people in the world who perhaps don't like other people and that it affected. And I said, it probably is because how it affected the adults around her. So for those of us who remember 9-11, it certainly is the week when we commemorate that. And I don't want to forget it because the folks who were first responders are dying and they are not surviving. And of course, the folks who lost friends and family members who never came back. In fact, there are many stories that pervade even, so, and even people whom I knew who took weeks to find their family members who were laid up in the hospitals all around the New York area. It took something like 10 days for them to find someone who had gone to work. And luckily that day was take your kid to work day in her firm and her son chose not to go. So there are all kinds of stories around 9-11. It touched most of us in a personal way. But for those of us, it may not have touched you personally, but it touched our lives. And the country has not been the same since. That's what started the war in Afghanistan. 
and and Iraq, and it's been 18 years. It's been 18 years. I'm sorry, just the war in Afghanistan. The war in Iraq started two years uh, uh, in the 90s, 1990, 91 or so. The, and this, but the war in Afghanistan began after that, and it's been 18 years. We need to put it to rest, right? It's time for us to get out of there, right? So I wanted to talk about when Harry met Bacon. And I wanted to talk about it contextually within the context of love. And I know some of you like looking at the people whom you're talking to. So you can find me streaming live on, on Twitter some days, right? But I wanted to talk about when Harry met Megan. I, I've been, I'm not a, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I don't watch British television a lot. Uh, there are some British shows that I like that I find on Netflix that I like that I, I mean, some of them are hilarious, I swear. And of course, who doesn't love James Bond, right? And the British culture is something that I'm very familiar with because I grew up, my background is such that I grew up in a country that was heavily influenced by the British culture. So I'm familiar with the ways of royalty and how the royal program operates. And so when, so I'm therefore familiar with Prince Harry and Prince William, who are descendants of Princess Diana, who was killed in 1997, or she died violently in a car crash in 1997. So watching them grow up publicly, living their lives out publicly, was something that most of us could, could identify with or relate to. And so it was interesting when they became of age and they're going to marry. It's like, huh? You're old enough to marry? Wow, what if your mom were here? Kind of thing. And so I found it fascinating then that Prince Harry, and it's a member of the British royal family, you know, heir in line to the throne of, of England, right? To the royal throne of England, and a white man, powerful and wealthy, place well positioned in the world of power, politics, just downplayed, very subtle, but still there nonetheless. Right, make no mistake about it, the royal family of Great Britain has world influence and world power. Make no mistake about that. And to watch him choose an American woman for his wife and a black American woman was very, very interesting. I wanted to see how this was going to play out because the British public loved Diana. And I wanted to see how this racism, if it exists, was going to play out. And it didn't surprise me and it didn't shock me. It just came out because first of all, I think they hate him for being wealthy enough and having enough power and confidence to love whom he loves and having the choice to do it and feeling that he can exercise his choice, but they hate her because she's black. They don't hate her because she's American. They couldn't, if she, if he had married Reese Witherspoon or somebody like that, it would have just been another white woman. She just happens to be American. But because she's black, there is this vapid, rabid hatred that has come out that I think is threatening. And here is why. There is a prominent journalist named Piers Morgan. I've, I've tweeted him on Twitter because the, the things he writes about, what he writes about Megan, is not a study in contrast or a study in personality. It's a study in racism. His remarks are racist, and he's as racist and out there, and he doesn't care if you call him racist. He doesn't care if what he pictorializes and says about her is racist. Recently, and I've been following his thread for a while, and at first... I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt to say, well, maybe he's just, you know, maybe he doesn't like her as a personality. Maybe he just doesn't admire her. After all, Meghan Markle was not a well-known actress, right? She was on Suits, an American drama based in Toronto. So she was not in the media all the time. She wasn't a bad girl with an image. She wasn't gyrating in public, smoking, drinking, none of that stuff. She was just an ordinary girl who chose the roles that she wanted to play in because it best represented her own personal views. That's it. So at first I thought Pierce Morgan's uh, uh, you purvey of her was choice of travel. Alarmed at it because I thought you really are racist. 
Here's why. He said that she and her jet setting ways. Now she's a member of the Royal family. I have never heard or read anywhere of any member of the British Royal family taking commercial jets, but he says that she should. Do you see the racism? You see it now? Right. He says that she should take a commercial jet to fly with her and her baby. To me, the British public and the British royal family need to look into that because Piers Morgan is influential. And if he can get a segment of the population to join him in his hate, it will hurt that, that young woman and her child. I don't even know if, if Harry and Meghan will end up living in Britain. I think they may have to leave Britain if they want to live in peace because there are some people for whom they have not forgotten color. They can't look beyond color. You, I, I, As a speaker, I've gone into places, and I'm going to tell you why this is, is, is such a thing. About three or four years ago, I inquired at a university in Ohio to be a speaker on their circuit. I talk about women and gender issues. Is that common to everyone, right? You would say that's common to everybody, right? But in talking about it, this, the, 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 the uh, director of student programs wrote me back to tell me that it's not that she doesn't want me there. It's not that she, it's just as, frankly, people would walk out because they have issues with color. They have issues with race. And she says, we have encountered it before. And she says, you're going to find that there's nothing wrong with what you say or how you say it or nothing wrong with you. It's just an issue of race. I can't begin to tell you how that affected me. I mean, I, I literally shut down. I did not report. Nope. I did never saw to speak at another university or college again. I said, forget it. I said, I'm not going to go through that racism. I internalized it and it hurt. I shouldn't have. What I should have done was speak up. What I should have done was call attention to it and talk about it so people can identify. Here's the thing. I don't believe you should hide anything under the covers. I believe you should come out with stuff and you should talk about it and bring attention to it, especially in today's age when we have more media than we had before. Prior to, we only had the other media and they controlled access to how you got access to media. But in today's world, we have media, right? They call it social media. To me, it's just media. You're out there, right? So you call attention to it and you talk about it. I think Meghan Markle is in a unique position like that. Somebody needs to stand up and say, and an actress really did. They did call out the attitude of some people to actually allege that she, as a member of the British royal family, should should ride on a private uh, on a commercial jet when the other girl, the other person who is a commoner who married the other the other brother who is in line to be the king. You don't tell her to ride on a commercial uh, on a commercial jet it's because she's white. But you're going to tell this black woman to ride on a commercial jet, knowing jolly well that royalty cannot ride commercial. Just think, just think about it. It's like having Beyonce or having uh, Felicity Hoffman or Reese Witherspoon go ride commercial. You can't do that. The security risks are too great. Right, the confusion that it would create in an airport. First of all, there's no guaranteed safety once you're on the plane and the doors lock. What people would do or wouldn't do. Do you see why I say this man is racist? And the thing is, Pierce Morgan was uh, is a journalist who lived here in the United States and who worked here on CNN. They had to get rid of him because the way he would attack people was sort of confrontational. But I just thought I enjoyed his journalism. At the time, I didn't see it as racist. I just thought he was confrontational. And that was his own form, right? That was his own practice. I had no idea that when he went back home to his home country, that he would look at an American, an American woman who is black and would treat her with the disdain that he treats her. Now, that is racism. So I, I, I used to follow him on Twitter because I liked him as a journalist, I admired him, but I don't now because you're racist. And Pierre, whoever is listening to this, whoever, as far as I'm concerned, your, your views fall into the purvey of racism. And frankly, I don't give a care what you think because that's the same thing you say about Meghan Markle, it's the same thing you would say about me. 
but you won't be, guess what you won't do? You won't be bold enough to say to my face because I will answer you. She may not answer you, but I will, right? Racism is wrong. And as far as I'm concerned, Harry met Meghan and he loved her. Now, he's a man of worldly influence, so he knows that this was going to be tested. In fact, he was willing to give up the throne and go live in Toronto as a normal person just so that he could be with whom he loved. And there are a lot of reasons for that. He watched his parents who lived in a loveless marriage and it killed his mother because she was trying to find love somewhere else. It made his father very unhappy. They lived together and they were bound by tradition and the customs of their culture that they could not find love outside of the prescribed relationships their parents and the society and their traditions chose for them. So the royal friend to be happy, let them marry whom they love. So Prince William married uh, the, the, the other young woman, uh, Kate, who was a commoner, but she's white, right? It, it appealed to the people because the people felt like they were part of the royal family. It ensures that the royal family stays current and relevant. But here comes Harry. Harry chose someone whom he loved. He said, this is whom I love. If we're going to marry whom I love, I'm going to marry whom I love. Not who you think I should be with. Not someone who is going to make me miserable and he cheats forever like his father did and breaks someone's heart and destroys people's lives. He's going to marry whom he loves. Now, what's wrong with that? You and I are asking the question, what's wrong with that? Tell me, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing is wrong with that, is there? No, because you're marrying whom you love. Why should whom you love matter, whether they're black, white, yellow, green, or red? Love is love. Love doesn't know any color, right? So it's time for us to release these traditions that we have that dictate that people should stay in one group forever, stay in this group. I thought we had gotten rid of the caste system. I thought we had excoriated those ideas because they don't form part of our currency today. They're not convenient and they are not conducive to good relationships, right? They're not conducive to the peace that we need to prevail. Now look at the UK. They're in a turmoil right now because Brexit, Lexit, leave it, stay it, leave the EU. They don't know what they're doing. The prime minister has gone totally authoritarian and shut down parliament until October my God, he just took a totalitarian move and exercised something that hasn't been exercised in more than 100 years. And at the same time, because some people feel they need to leave the European Union, I kind of agree with that. I think people should have, I think a country should have control of its borders. I think they should have some control. I think I agree with them with that. Sorry, but I do agree with that. Yes, I do. I do agree with it. I think Britain should leave the they should leave the, the EU. It was never a good idea in the first place. And I think they should have some control over their sovereignty and who comes into their borders and not allow it to be dictated by other folks who might not have the same views and might not be in the same position that you're in. I agree with that. Much like here in the U.S., I think the U.S. should have a border. I don't know why a border never existed in, in between us and Mexico. That just never made sense to me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't understand that. So so I think to put it contextually, everyone should have borders. But when it comes to love, does love have borders? Really? Love should be the one clarifying moment in humanity that has no borders. We should love everyone equally. We should love everyone much like we would want to be loved. And I say to Pierce Morgan, maybe you never experienced love. For all the people who are experiencing and who are practicing racism, maybe you don't know what love is. Some of you say that you're Christian. Some of you say you're Islamic. You say you have, you practice and believe in faiths that allow you to show love and demonstrate love. It's very lacking from your daily discourse, and it certainly is lacking from your language. To actually write a, a, an article that pillifies and vilifies a young woman for no other reason than the color of her skin is pitiful. And as a prominent journalist, I think Piers Morgan should step aside. I think that's very sad and very, very, very lacking of him in his journalistic tendencies. I think that was very sad. I found that very sad. And But it also 
told the rest of us exactly where he stands, that he's racist. And I say that to everybody out there. Any, I don't care what kind of journalist you are. I am a person of color, right? And I'm a woman and I'm an immigrant and I can't change that. And I don't have any issues with being there. So I'm forever going to be exactly who I am. So if you don't like me for any of those reasons, then you are racist. Plain and simple. If you're not going to like me, then dislike me because for other reasons, such as reasons that have nothing to do with my personhood. My personhood is that I'm a woman and I'm a person of color and I'm an immigrant. That's my personhood. That's how I was created to be. I wasn't created to fall into your mix of being white and born American and live in America or born, uh, born British. I was created in this personhood. So if you don't like me, you like me for things that I have no control over. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're going to dislike me, dislike me for things I could change. Like you don't like the color of my hair. You don't like, you know, my makeup or you don't like what color clothing I wear or you don't like, you know, you don't like the words that I speak. You don't like what I write on. Like me for things that I can change. Dislike me for things that I can change. But don't dislike a person because of their appearance. Do you realize that so, people can't change their appearance? You're born black. You're born black forever. You can't change that. What you're going to do, lighten your skin to make it more appealing to others? I'm not going to do that. And I'm never going to do that. I'm not going to light my skin so that you can think that you I can appeal to you. I am exactly who I am because this is how I was created to be. Right? This is the way that I sound is exactly how I'm supposed to sound. I'm not going to change that or modify it so that you can find it more appealing because it doesn't match up or line up with what you think that a person should be. No. Time out for that. The world is changing even as we speak. The world is no longer strict on people today because of media are listening to people from all parts of the planet. So people today are not going to be as strict in their confines of what should and shouldn't be. It's time literally to grow up. It's time for us to start accepting people exactly as they are with how they come rather than attaching labels to them that you should be this and you should be that for them to be taken seriously. Where does that come from? Tell me, where does that come from, right? That comes from a place that is born out of our own need to like and dislike people. I don't like you simply because you're black, because you're Hispanic, because you're Indian, because you're Asian, because you come from Eastern Europe, whatever. No, we need to cut it out. But in in, 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 in the case of Meghan Markle, Meg, uh, Duchess Meghan and Prince Harry, I think it's dangerous. It's a dangerous trend. Years ago, in before the 2012 elections, I wrote a blog called The Unity of Hate. I saw where all this hatred against Barack Obama was leading to. And I saw that it was going to end in these kinds of situations that we're seeing, the mass hatred. And here it is. Here it is, the unity of hate. You have to be careful about that. So to members of the royal family, I wish you well. I certainly do. I hope you have a hedge of protection around you. But to the rest of us, the general public, the public who is listening, sit back and think about why do you hate someone just because they're different than you are? Why should you? Why do you hate this young woman? Not because she's American, because you like Americans, but you hate her because she's Black and she's occupying a place of power that you think should be reserved for someone who is white. That is wrong. That is wrong and has always been wrong. And if you really have issues with it, to be honest with you, maybe you need to go talk to your ancestors because they're the ones who created this mix up anyway. Everybody was content in their part of the world where they were and everybody started thinking, well, I'm going to go over there and conquer and bring all the wealth back to my country and build my country up. And it started this mass flow, this interplay of people and peoples. And now we all just are a hodgepodge and a mixture of people. We're all human. And I just want to ask you all this question. 
if something were to happen to the planet, are you going to care that somebody from Afghanistan or India or Pakistan help you? Are you going to care if something were to happen that we all have to head south? Are you going to care? Look at what's happening in Greenland, for crying out loud. Look at what hap what's happening in the Arctic, where it's melting. When all those seas, when all that water melts and the seas rise up, you realize that whole island nations are going to disappear? What will happen to those people? They're going to have to go somewhere to live. Are you going to tell them they can't come and a whole section of humanity just disappears because the seas are rising? Is that what you're going to do? Is that is it really? You're just going to say, Suck, tough sucks to be you? Huh? Just because you're looking at people. You don't look at, you know, Martin Luther King said, judge someone based on the content of their character, not on the color of their skin. I have found that to be true. When I meet people, I want to know who you are. I want to know exactly who you are because that's how I'm perceiving you to be. You're not a white guy, a white girl, a black guy, a black girl. I'm looking at you. What kind of person are you? How do you make me feel is what I'm using to judge you by. And if, if you're going to leave me with a distaste in my mouth that makes me feel that because of the color of my skin, you deem me to not be a good person, then you suck as a human being. You sincerely suck. And that's the message that I want to convey to the racists and the people who propagate racism and the people who are strident about racism. You suck as human beings. You need to hear that and you need to understand that because judging someone based on how this looks, this is surface. Underneath, we're all the same. We're made of blood and cells. And people right now need donation of blood to keep them going. People need donation of organs to keep them going. We're all the same because we're human beings. Walk on two legs, have two arms, two eyes, you know, one nose, mouth. All human beings have two ears on either side of their head. We're not, it's the, the animals are, the animal kingdom is a whole different race. It's a whole different thing that we dominate and, and control that. So for you to hate a human being, simply because of their appearance means that you suck as a human being. And yes, you do. And if no one has ever told you before, you need to look inward and you need to look at yourself and ask yourself, am I being the best version of myself? Am I being the best person that I could be? Think about that before you go off and start pointing finger, hating people just before some things that they can't help. It's like hating a disabled person. Y'all, isn't that mean? Is that mean? Yeah, that is me. So how are you going to hate someone for how they look, for their color of their skin, their hair texture, and all the things that typifies what differentiates us as human beings? They have no control over that. That's how they were created to be. Each person is equal. The problem is you don't believe in equality. And it's okay if you want to feel that you're superior based on your abilities. But if you want, I, I find it really simple. I think you're a simple, basic person. If you think your superiority is based on your color, I find you very basic. <laughs> I think it's very basic and silly. Okay. It's just silly to me. Be superior because you have, oh, you have different abilities. You have abilities of being a med medical doctor, being an engineer, being an astrophysicist. That's what makes you superior, your knowledge, your prowess, your skill. That's what makes you a superior person. The way you look at others and treat others, that's what defines you, not by the color of your skin. This is Down to Earth with Harriet Kamek. I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Join me on Spotify later today, and you'll find that there is more that you can do. Go to my website, harrietkamek.com. But do you see what I'm saying, though? The, the fact is, if you want to call in and express your views, feel free to call in 516-387-1463. Let me make you put my glasses on. Yep, 516-387-1463. Make sure you call in and share with us your own views on what you think is dynamic. Uh, I, I find that this whole saga of racism, it, 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 it confounds me, and I don't like it. I think we, we create barriers. And I understand that as humans, we tend to look for classifications, right? And we look for strata that is going to define us. 
I find that I probably like classism better because then at least it you're distinguished based on uh, uh, money and, and power, things that are within your control, right? Things that are within your ambit. But to distinguish against people based on their color is really disgusting. It also tells me a lot about people. Yeah, I used the journalist Pierce Morgan as an example, and I pitted against him because he pitted it first against her. And pitting it against her is pitting it against all women who look like her, right? So I'm just the one who takes him on. I don't care. I've tweeted him. I don't care, right? I've tweeted him. He can come at me all he wants. I will come back at him because it is ridiculous. And I'm going to paint him exactly how the public should see him as racist. It's not just about the Duchess of Sussex. It's about all women who look like her and who, who exist in other parts of the world. All women who are mixed, whether they're mixed with black or they're mixed with other cultures, he hates every one of us. He hates women and he hates women who are mixed. That is racism. And that's also misogynistic, Mr. Pierce Morgan. So if you're listening, go clean it up. And you need you owe that woman an apology. You're inciting a riot against her, just so you know. You're inciting the British public and turning the British public's mind against her because you don't like her. Whatever your reasons are for not liking her, they're not valid. Not one of them is valid because the primary reason you don't like her is her color. And for that, you are inciting a riot. And you should be held accountable if something happens to her. Telling her to go fly commercial when no member of the British royal family flies commercial, is denigrating her and demeaning her. And somehow I feel like the royal family doesn't like it. If you thought you were getting through to some members of the royal family and they were smiling with you and, <laughs> and giggling, and say, <laughs> you are sadly mistaken. I don't think they like it one bit. I think the ones who have the power are watching you and they're not liking it. And they will something will be done, right? What does race have to do with love? Think about that. If I were to bring home a white man to my mother and to my family and say, this is whom I love, what does that have to do with love, right? If your child were to bring home someone of a different culture, what does that have to do with love? Shouldn't you be more worried about, can you guys live together? Will you get along? Will you love and take care of one another? That's what is important. Will you respect one another? That's what's important. What you see on the outside doesn't matter. It's who you are on the inside that really counts. And I have found through my travels and, and, and talking to people across the spectrum, I have found that people, as people, we judge people based on how we look. As soon as we meet folks, we place them in a category based on how we look. I, I, I kid you not. I, I, one of the most interesting things that happened to me was wearing my hair in braids. It never failed to amaze me how people reacted. My daughter says it best. She's like, you know, mom, they probably were thinking you're just a mixed woman of mixed race who was just embracing the black or the nigger part of you. And I was like, oh my God, no, 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 no. Don't go there. And she was, mm -hmm, that's what they were thinking. But I was never, <laughs> I was just like, Oh my God, this is how people really feel and think. It's how people reacted to my hairstyle. And I'm like, there's some deep prejudices out there for real. There's some really interesting points of view and perspectives. And, and, and many people say, well, I have a right to think how I think. And I have a right to be racist if I want to be. And I have a right to be. And I'm like, no, you don't. You seriously don't. You seriously don't. No. Just because I have a right to doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. I have a right to do whatever I want to do. Does it mean that it's the right thing to do? No. You have a right to do whatever you want to do. Does it mean it's the right thing to do? No. We have a responsibility. And the more influence you have is the greater the responsibility that you have. I think in today's world, we find a lot of people have acquired influence and have accrued influence and have not a clue what to do with it. They just think that, oh, well, it's okay to just say whatever they want to say, do whatever they want to do. No, it's not okay. Seriously, it's not okay, right? It's never okay.
So I want to challenge you today. I want you to think on these things. I want you to think about the content of what you say and to think about how you make others feel in your presence. It's like someone who says, I'm never racist because I have black friends. And the rest of us are like, and I'm like, and what does that say about you? Tell me, what does that say about you? You are not racist and you have black friends. What does that say about you? Right? <laughs> Think on these things. Think about that. Think about what does that say about you? You're not racist and you have black friends. Go back and think about that. Slow wine. Slow wine. Slow wine just a bit. What does that say about you? <laughs> right? <laughs> think about it. It, it. We have to get to this. Because I keep thinking. It, it, it could just be me, right? But I keep thinking, what if there is a weather catastrophic event that affects everyone on the planet? What would we all do? Because we have marginalized people so badly. What would we all do? And we're seeing it happen more and more. It's almost as if there's coming, there's a coming level playing field that's going to end all the marginalization. And we're going to find ourselves turning to others for help whom we probably would not, who did not respect, would not have respected. Because that's just how stuff works. You can't get away from, you can't get away from that. You, you, you can't just get away from always being the one in, on top. You know, for, for thousands, of, for hundreds of years now, the Europeans have had a, a say in what happens. And descendants of Europeans, they came over the side of the world and colonized the world. The reason we say colonized is because people were already living on the side of the world who were quite happy the way they were. Now, I, don't, I think that was part of a plan and a design because what it did was it brought all sorts of people together. It's just like if you were to do a DNA... Uh, uh, find of yourself, right? You know, all these popular websites that tell you if you send in your DNA samples, it can tell you what you look like and so on. Interesting, isn't it? So now we're finding that people are really, some of us are related to people on three different planets, three different continents rather, right? What does that say? People are surprised. People are emerging very, you know, surprised at what is in their DNA, they look so different on the outside compared to what your DNA says. Isn't that just amazing? It, don't you find that kind of a flamox right there? You look so different on the outside than what your DNA says about you. Now, I, I've never done a DNA sample, and I'm not doing it. Why? I already know what I, what I am like. And I, I, I have issues. I, I think they're collecting. <laughs> I think it's a way of... It's sort of like a second census, right? It's collecting people and grouping them. So if they need to in the future, they can group people by, by, by what you are or what you're mixed with. And they can tell what kind of diseases and so on that a certain group of people are more prone to. So I'm not into that. They're going to have to do the old-fashioned testing when the time comes. I'm not subscribing to it. So I haven't done it. And I, I, I hesitate to do it primarily on that reason. For that alone, I don't want to end up in some database somewhere. You, you, recently, I read a story of somebody who they found a killer in a 1999 killing. And the reason they found him was through DNA evidence. How? Uh, they ran the DNA of the proposed people, the, the people who were last seen near the person who died, through a database. And they got a hit on a person and when they looked at the DNA who that person was connected to, one of the persons they were connected to was a person of interest who at the time they had no evidence and they had to release. Turns out the guy's now a pastor and blah, 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 and they had to take him down. But he was the killer. And he confessed, and that's why he became a pastor. It convicted him. So I'm not going to do. So in, in my space, I'm thinking uh, there are ulterior motives for knowing who everyone is related to, where everybody comes from. And I'm like, I'm not going to be a part of that. I don't want them to say that I got here and, I, you know, I'm related to them. And I find it funny. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have I have reservations, deep reservations about doing a DNA profile. I'm satisfied with the oral traditions 
that my ancestors have left me with. My ancestors, the ones who are still alive, like my grandmother is 97 in next April. I'm satisfied with her story. And I'm satisfied with what my father told me. And I'm satisfied with the efforts we have made since then to identify those who are still in the old country. So I will leave that there. <laughs> All right. I will leave that there. I'm no, I'm not pursuing nothing. I'm not interested because I think that it serves a purpose and I'm not sure that the purpose is going to be beneficial to me. So on that basis, they can keep that one, <laughs> right? <laughs> they can keep it. So I just, I, I, that's how I feel. I, I don't know if that is going to lessen racism necessarily. I think some of the most strident people who are racist probably need to go uh, do a, a profile. I think it might be interesting for them to find out whom they're related to. What do you think? <laughs> Don't you think so? I think some of the people who have the most objections to being black or have the most objections to people who are Chinese or Asian or Hispanic, I think they should go. I think it would serve them well to go and find out who they're related to. They might just be completely blown away, might not even like what you find, right? As for me, I think I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm just going to stay right here, over here, and just deal with what I have to deal with and just be okay with that. Is that okay? Is that okay, anybody? That okay, right? <laughs> I want you to do me a favor. Go to my website, theexodusfoundation.com. That's the foundation through which we do our nonprofit work. That's the foundation through which we provide services to victims of human sex trafficking. So go over there and make a donation. Any donation that you give helps us to do what we do, right? And in the meantime, if you ever need me to come and talk about any of these things, the intersection of faith and immigration, the intersections of border security, the objectification of women, human sex trafficking, what does violence do to individuals? If you want me to come and talk to on any of those issues, certainly reach out to me, harrykamrick.com, as well as you can find me on Facebook social and any social media site. Right, info at harrykemmock.com, info at the Exodus Foundation.com are available email platforms for you to reach me at. I so appreciate taking time out, you taking time out to listen to me today. Share this program with someone you know simply by giving it a retweet. Retweets are very helpful. Thank you. Right. And you as well as you can go on over to Spotify and listen to some of the shows that we have done since then of course we're on blog talk radio as well so there are over a hundred episodes on blog talk radio we have over 300 episodes on blog talk radio and over a hundred videos on youtube so there are a plethora of media for you to find us at that you can relate to all right so thank you so much everybody i know it's monday and i know everybody had you have we all have things to do right so I want to thank you so much for joining us. Join me again tomorrow on Down to Earth with Harry Kimmer as we continue to talk about these and the issues that matter. Thanks, everybody. Be blessed. Hey.